What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know Big Flocker with a convict's perspective, and I'm going to smash that slide on through with that little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future fire content. Now, real quick, man, this next episode is going to talk about where the Northerners, North Daniels went wrong and where, where the NFU went wrong, but we're going to really focus on basically the Northerners. See, during my time there, when I first went to the system, that term Northerner just barely started. It was either you were a North Daniel or you were a bro, which meant you were a Nusser Das or a structure, or you were a C, which meant you were a Nusser Familia, NF, right? Back then, like I said, it was a lot smoother in the way things operated, because you had those that wanted to play the politics and those that just were manpower and either they were supportive of politics or they just avoided it. But you had that option on the prison yard back then. The only expectations you had when I first arrived was you, you submit your paperwork, right? To make sure you're in good standings, right? Your name, your AK. And then at the most, if it was wartime and shit kicked off, then of course you were expected to get off. Other than that, the basic policies and procedures that you had, like, Walking in pairs and someone when someone takes a shower or piss, you post up for them and just don't disrespect anybody or anything like that. Report anything that could be major to your channel. That was just basic stuff. And a lot of times we used to do the HHPs verbally instead of writing them down because motherfuckers were getting caught up with paperwork and being validated. So as this was going on, everybody knows that Nusa Dasa started to pick up its title in, in 92, 93. OK, before it was, you know, referred to as structure or, or whatnot. There was different obligations, but the NR basically hit hard around 92, 93. And so did the validation process. Now, the NF was so worried about everything that they started to employ certain individuals that were undercovers that were in the NR that were holding like the council or administrative uh, uh, positions. Therefore, they had their their ears and eyes on what the NR was doing. Now, the NR started to. Uh, in some ways, started to feel like they were their own entity, right? You had you even had an NF member that was fucking supporting the NR that they, that they shouldn't be deleted, which was Donkey Kong from Salinas. Then you had Pee Wee from fucking Gilroy, and you had a couple other cats that were pushing the NR was his own entity, right? Now, the NF felt like, you know what? We created you, right? There's no reason for you guys just to go outside the scope of what we put you guys to be established. So you, had, you started having structure or NR regiments, you know, that were – being built on the streets and people were leaving prisons and doing different things. And this changed everything because the NF started to see, okay, the NR is feeling like they're their own entity. And then you also had those that were regular nor nor Northerners or actually North Daniels back in my time, you didn't call them Northerners that were not obligated, but that were on these lines. And some of these dudes that had statuses were taking advantage of them. Not all, but a select few were. So this gave them all the reason to fucking basically delete the NR title you know what I mean? Basically, you have the same obligations as what you were as an NR member, right? But you don't no longer have the title, and it was being stressed that you were under the umbrella of the NF. Now, what changed was is the rather North Daniels that they were calling Northerners now, right? Which the original format was this. It was North Daniel Soldado and North, North Daniel. There was no mention of Northerner at first in the first draft. They eventually changed it to Northerner. Was now you were where you had a North Daniel Soldado who was previously under Nusra Rasa, was obligated to the North Daniel bylaws and whatnot. Now a Northerner was responsible to follow under the North Daniel bylaws. So there was maybe more expectations on one, but it was basically became the same thing. You basically brought everybody up to an equal level. Before, you didn't give a rather Northerner of the bonds, the format. Education was only given when you went to the hole. Or if you were proven to be someone that was a strong sympathizer, associate of the Nusarasa. So now you had all these OGs, right, that had put in work all these years that now were being told they had to do this and that. The participation by mandate became the biggest change. And that's what happened with the, North, the rather Northerners. They had a participation by mandate now that there was more expectations that they had to live by and follow. You know, um, education, positions, help out. You couldn't really refuse too much on the fucking main line. The only thing I think a North Daniel at that time could really refuse, unless they own a cleanup, was whether they had to use a piece or not. That was maybe, maybe the only difference between a North Daniel Soldado and a Northerner. Now, of course, those that were North Daniel Soldados would fulfill the, the, the COC positions because they were expected to be more seasoned, seasoned and experienced. Now, you have OGs coming in there and you're telling them that they have to do this and that. 
And a lot of times it'd be some 22-year-old kid that just got pulled. This dude's like in his 40s, like, who the fuck are you, man? You know what I mean? Fucking, I, I hit these prison yards, you were stealing diapers. And that's how some of those OGs felt. That's why even to today, you don't see too many OGs on, in the Department of Corrections that are still falling under the North Daniel structure or, or whatnot. Because they changed everything. They put a, they put these dudes in a position to where their program had been a certain way for years. And when it was ready to kick off, they were there. Now they had all these new fucking rules and stuff that they had to live by. So you had homeboys that were ready to rock and ride back then. But now it was, like I said, a whole different type of uh, atmosphere. You know, I remember never in the county jail, like. I was around a lot of those OGs and stuff, man. And they knew how to conduct themselves, but they just didn't involve themselves politically. And that's why they had such long careers. Now, this also had an effect on the first-termers. Dudes that were just coming coming to prison that were knuckleheads. They didn't want to follow some of these procedures, right? So pretty much, like I said, that, that where they went wrong was is they became too strict, unnecessary on their own people. They expected everybody just to fucking, you know, fall and file and do what was expected, Right. But a lot of people were not really feeling it. They're not digging it. And to this day, there's some dudes that are only doing it because they don't want to be labeled fucking no good or have to go to a PC yard or SMY yard. So they fucking follow follow what's expected of them, even though they're not feeling it. You know, now, in my eyes, that's the worst thing, because you're never going to get the same energy from your manpower when it's time for fucking get out war or battle. It's just the truth of it. Now, then you have this new red on red thing. And even when people had personal disputes it depended on who you knew or who had the right who had the money that was going to come out on top on these incidents you know and like i said there was a lot of dudes that hid behind the red on red there was dudes that got caught up because dudes were better at filing reports or were able to file that report before the next man there's a saying whoever files that fucking report or gets ahead of the fucking the rumors is always going to be the one that comes out on top and so you had a lot of that fucking going on as well and a lot of gossip you know the the Back in the days, you didn't really talk about this kind of stuff, and it slowly started to become to where regular northerners were able to dis- talk about certain groups and whatnot, or were being given certain information that they should have never been fucking given. Now, with all this, what do you guys think happened? When you have different layers and different terrors, right, and different people who function on different levels, it's hard to bring people under the same uh, level of awareness and discipline unless they want it. Therefore, you started to have people who really um, separated themselves. Some thought they were better than others. You started to hear terms like stragglers. Oh, they were stragglers. Like they weren't with the functions. So what you did and what you acted was going to bring the attention that you were given. You know, a lot of dudes that I did time with, very few of them are still in good standings. And, and this goes with people who had status and didn't have status. Now, the end of his mind was, okay, we're going to bring these dudes all on the same level. Therefore, all our soldados are competent and capable and seasoned. But you lost, they lost more soldados. They lost dudes that had the experience. You know, there was times I was on fucking the yard. There wasn't someone that was fucking over 35 years old or 30 at that, right? So a lot of dudes that were in good standings got pushed back. Some of them got deemed because they'd been doing this for so long, and now you're trying to tell them that, oh, I have to do this and that. And so they bark back. Next thing you know, they're fucking getting removed. I can count countless removals of individuals where that happened. So what went wrong with the NFL or North Day, what could have been different was they needed more checks and balances. And see, what I mean by that is you can't have the same expectation for every fucking person because not everybody can live up to that expectation. Before, when you had statuses, you know what your expectation was. You committed yourself to that. Therefore, you knew what to do. And as far as when you were just regular end, it was the same thing. And see, there was options for regular ends, not to what you call drop out or whatever, but if they wanted to go Christian or something like that or just weren't feeling it, if they went through the right procedure and got the right fucking people and weren't obligated to any of the prison organizations or gangs, they were given the opportunity to step, step, uh, basically step back in a way or step to the side. And there was dudes that did that. And these same people sometimes would say, okay, look, I don't want to be involved in everyday politics or this and that, but if you need me, I'm here, right? But eventually that wasn't going to be accepted. So anything that's gone wrong within the North Daniel Collective or Northern Collective has all came basically from the changes that the tops made. That's just the truth of it. They had to fucking tamper with it. They had to make certain changes that they thought were going to help out the overall majority. Yes, you may get a certain percentage of individuals who now are more seasoned and educated, Right. But at the same time, at what cost? And so 
I keep on hearing the term eras, eras. There's different eras now, right? And slowly throughout the years, it's became more about in of control now. So the status levels as far as who's equal and who's not, it's pretty obvious down those lines about equality that not every northerner or North Daniel is being given the same equal outlook or treatment as every other individual. And that's going to affect your carnalismo. See, the carnalismo is what used to keep people, you know what I'm saying, grounded and kept people together towards a common goal, towards common causes, especially on those yards when they were outnumbered. You know, back in the 90s, you had a lot of stuff that was going on in prison, right, that a lot of North Daniels and then our members didn't really be affected with what's going on with the NF. Those were NF issues. Those were NF affairs. And so you were able to separate the two. Now, after the red on red policy came out in the GUNCD, like I said, and as far as the 497 revisals, you had every individual that was falling under the NF's control, which they were always under NF control, but it wasn't always out there. Now people are being taxed. Now people are being expected to contribute, which was a word we use, contributions instead of tax. And now the expectations were way different. If you didn't comply, you were what you call the program failure. Therefore, individuals were getting deemed, deemed no good because they had been programmed in a certain way for so long. Some would be out there getting their hustle on. Some were fucking all fucking, you know, heroin down on the yards back then. But it didn't stop them from doing what they had to do, yet they weren't involved in the prison politics. They were just individuals that were there that when it was time to get busy, let's fucking rock and roll. And slowly, the agendas, which have always been the same agenda, it just wasn't out there, it became more about the money. It became less about security, less about carnalismo, and more about money. And when you separate all that, right, and you put money first, it's going to affect your manpower. Look at how many hits that we've seen in prison since the end of all hostilities on regular northerners. For whatever reasons, whether they had it coming or not, this wasn't the case fucking 20 years ago. Now, what maybe they thought were the choices that were in the best interest, right? Overall, maybe weren't the best interest. Maybe these decisions weren't. Because it pretty much, like I said, man, it put expectations on, on certain individuals, right? And not everybody wants to be involved in the politics. Now you're forced to be part of the politics. You got this era, this generation, they don't know. They don't understand that it wasn't always like what they're experiencing now. You know, uh, the the uh, whole NA screening process, the whole fucking front line and you're fined and you're this and that. That stuff didn't start coming into fucking effect till the 2000s, right? And see, like I said back then, you'd even have cars on certain yards, right? Sound hole car, fucking two-layer car, whatever. But when it was come time to get busy... They put all that shit to the side and were ready to rock and roll. Therefore, they didn't lose as many manpower to dudes that just wanted to fucking walk away just to do their own thing. They didn't lose fucking manpower to those that were going to join one of these groups that now were on the SNY side. And SNY had a big factor to do, to, big factor in affecting all this. Right? You know, there's dudes that have hit the system like the last five years, and they don't realize that you know the way they're functioning is totally different. Now, again, advancement demands change, but the advancement didn't really help. The Hinti in general, you know, I have to question it. Like I said, I think it was better when you had, you know, those that were on the, in the lines that played the politics that were obligated to, right? Then you had those that were fucking either sympathizing or trying to strive. And then you had those that were just doing their time. You knew when push came to shove that if you didn't, if these individuals didn't get busy, they knew what the consequences were going to be, right? But back then, for some reason, it all used to gel together. Yeah, the only thing that was pretty bad was there was those that had rank and status that started to abuse certain individuals that didn't know any better. See, that's why the bonds were starting to be given just to regular North Northerners back then. Because how could you uphold somebody to live under these as your laws if you didn't understand them? And there was a lot of bros that were pissed off that, that certain teachings that were strictly just for uh, North Daniel Soldados were being given to Northerners. Basically, what started happening was people just started telling on each other. And what I mean by telling on each other was they would report to their channel, snitching on homeboys within fucking homeboys, violating certain policies within fucking the collective, you know, and that's going to bring distrust. That's going to bring a lot of animosity. It's going to make people hostile. So what people thought maybe was going to be in the best interest as a collective, it kind of hurt them in my personal opinion. The quality of soldados that were still there were a lot less. 
you know, and then you had individuals that were being assented to positions that really didn't have the proper teachings, right? But they were just being force fed education and therefore they were resuming authority roles and making bad decisions. The, the new era, like I said, they're involved in all the money making schemes and assisting the Cornelius, you know, and that's changed a lot. Now you got rather dudes that are just northerners that are being indicted associated with a prison gang just based upon the little assistance that they do. Before the NF used to deal with their own issues, their own business, their own muertes. Now that they're using Northerners and Northanos the same way in which the MA has always used the Sylvanios. They're basically a mirror image, right? Which is a little bit different chain of command structure, you know, um, and basically the different ways in which they have their territories, you know? You know, I was talking to someone about eras and how it is today as opposed to like 20, 30 years ago. And it, like I said, there's a lot of things that kind of affected the group as a whole because you heard the rumblings. You heard the people talking about it. And then you heard the people that were all the S&Y side talking about it. You know, the tyranny, the dictatorship, all those things that you're taught in the beginning that were being taught to, to young soldados about the cause and struggle has now been pretty much eliminated. I mean, there's certain things that are expected now that years before were not expected of a northerner or even a North Daniel soldado. It became more about control and money. It's not about carnalismo. It's not about the respect. It's not about the safety. It's about how am I going to line my pockets and how am I going to be able to produce on this yard the best. Therefore, you got soldados that are striving to become something, and they're already learning that it's not about the people. It's about the money. So those that are now being pulled and placed in certain positions and recruited and taught, their teachings have been now tainted as opposed to what the true teachings were. Now, this is just my personal opinion, but this is what I firsthand witnessed and seen. You know, it changed everywhere based upon certain decisions that were being made. You know, different eras. Like I said, I come from the game banging era, like in the early 90s. And a lot of us had to fucking fall and file. And I think maybe that may have been the issue with why they wanted to change a lot of the programs was because there was such a wave of homeboys coming in for game banging. It was different than those that were coming in the 80s and early 90s. Now, don't get me wrong. Not every decision that was being made for the North Day was bad during this era. The last 30 years, there's been some good choices. But some of the worst choices was the involvement level, the expectation level, because those expectations weren't set for everybody. And that made a lot of people either get crossed up because they didn't know any better or it made people walk away. And when you damage two things, you damage your numbers and you damage your carnalismo, there's, you have less quality soldados ready to fucking put forth the effort than you did before. Anyways, this is just my personal perspective. This is a quick topic I wanted to do. But that's it.